Welcome to another episode of Positive Perspectives on Accounting, the virtual seminar series that explores the enabling aspect of accounting in society. In today's episode, we, that is... Lukas Gretzky, located in Stockholm. And Drew Bumsma, located in Sydney, will again explore the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on accounting education. In this episode, we will talk about the creation of the teaching space in an online environment, the approach of different institutions to the uh, move to online teaching, and we will also have a look at how the future of accounting education might look very differently in a post-coronavirus era. We have the great pleasure to welcome our guest Joe Oliveira, who is not only an accounting researcher interested in accounting and organizational change, information systems, accounting and innovation, but also a passionate and experienced accounting educator working together with different institutions. Uh, Joao, thank you so much uh, for agreeing to be part of the Positive Perspectives on Accounting virtual seminar series. It's great to have you here. And uh, Joao, would you mind uh, starting maybe telling us a little bit about the different courses that you have been involved in over the last couple of weeks or months? Well, first of all, thank you for uh, having me here, for inviting me. Um, so what I've been doing uh, during these last few months uh, is um, in, at FEP, I've been teaching um, courses at undergraduate, um, postgraduate and PhD levels. And uh, in, uh, in HSA, I was, I've been teaching business performance management in the Master in Management. Uh, so these were the, um, I, I, I've, this is not teaching, but I, at FEP, I was involved also, uh, I was the coordinator of um, a series of seminars targeted to uh, PhD and, and staff with some international uh, researchers. And fortunately, it was scheduled to happen during April, May, and June. So you can imagine what happened and everything got canceled. So mm. it's live. <laughs> and Joe, since you've been involved in many different courses, uh, you've had the experience of moving all of them to an online format. What did you perceive as the main challenges in moving to an online format and how did you address these challenges? Of course, that, uh, our, our approach was largely, largely driven by the um, specificities of the, of the, the institutions, uh, the resources, the challenges, the kind of students they had. So it's not surprising that the two institutions ended up by choosing different solutions. Uh, so at, at FEP, um, we w basically went for um, asynchronous classes, whereas at HSA Paris, we went for synchronous classes. Now, um, so I, I can tell a little bit of these two different types of, of challenges involved in, in the two institutions. Um, when it came to asynchronous teaching, I think that the, the greatest challenge that, that we are all facing is how to ensure that there is a sufficient interaction between between students and, and, and teachers because and us because it is very easy for students to become disengaged uh, so we deliver the materials and we have no visibility of about of what students are doing them so we have of course to create these these moments these instances of of interaction and when it happens, it can actually be quite good. So, uh, in, um, for example, I, 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 in the Master in Management at FEP, I, I organized a forum uh, in a class of 30-something students. And I had, uh, on a voluntary basis, something like 20-something 20, 20 contributions um, to discuss that case. Now, in the physical classroom, I mean, no one would get contributions from 20 students uh, on a on two very specific questions uh, on, on, on that case. So it allows to bring um, more contributions uh, from, from more students. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty much aware that not every, it doesn't work like this uh, in all occasions. And I'm still not, I still don't have definite conclusions to, uh, to know what makes it work in some situations and not in others. Um, I know that it's 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 not just not enough to cr make the, the materials available to create even to create a forum and then just leave it. We have to make sure that they do it in a specific time frame and so that they they, they go 
they come back and we feed them with more material that's 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 a challenge um it was also a challenge that I mean, the amount of time that it took it's, mm. it was ridiculous uh and uh and so i fortunately i i received the good advice to try to reduce complexity in all things that were not essential um so one thing that uh fortunately i ended up by deciding to do is uh not to try to capture uh my image uh to not to record the class with my with my image because that would that would drastically increase the time needed to uh to sort all those things that we, i mean we're not really too comfortable with it so we we redo or we cut uh, so. the other thing was to so I, I basically narrated the slides or uh solve go through the exercise and just recording my voice that was uh something important um also i had to to plan what i had to say so it was just a, not enough to improvise because then the result would not be great really so so i actually and i mean another suggestion which i received to write the script which at first i thought well, I can write the script then uh yeah i mean it, it actually allows us to focus on the key messages and uh, then basically the challenge is to go through the script without being noticeable that uh, that you are actually reading so sometimes you go a little bit off the script the the script but um that was that was a, a very a very uh, good approach now uh, turning to uh, i should say uh that so there the classes were synchronous and i mean they are more fun basically um so what kind of things did i try to keep in mind uh first i decide i decide to to stand when teaching because uh when you if you're sitting down for one and a half hours or three hours then you lose the energy then you lose the, the physical movement when you go back and so i mean it's like you're in tiny boxes uh, for for students. So if you're always like this, then it's I mean, you see. So uh, I, I decided to uh, to uh, to stand while while lecturing. So I had to I mean change some things. So I had to elevate the, the equipment, etc. So uh, um, and then what other things? I mean, communication is is not so easy. We we lose a lot uh, when we. Uh, when we teach uh, virtually. So I try to facilitate communication as much as possible. So um, for example, I, I started using some symbols, some images, which represented something. So in Zoom, for example, the little blue hand. So uh, in the first slide, I started, first time that that showed up, I said, okay, when you see this blue hand, I know that I, I want you to participate so raise your hands so and the second time i already i only needed to show them the blue hands and they already knew that there was a question coming um uh we also know that i mean sometimes people do something else while they are watching our our um our material so the fact that there is that blue hand there uh, draws their attention and i include the questions there because if by accident the person missed the question for some reason, then the question will be there and that person will still be able to, to join. Um, and then those things which everyone talks about, you know, shorter periods, frequent reminders of the, the class, um, of the, the path that we are taking, so all that. And that's, that was important. And the, uh, you mentioned the interaction with the students and did they also like responded by answering the questions that you raised in class and how did they, how did they put forward their answers? Yeah, yeah that, that was, that's a challenge. Okay. The, how to keep students engaged. Um, I mean, they can be engaged without participating, but what I realized is that when they were the least visibly, visibly engaged, they were, uh, I think that the less intellectually engaged they were as well. Um, so taking as a proxy the cameras, whether they kept the cameras on or not. 
So I, I realized that the students, the, the groups that where more students had their cameras on, um, contributions were more, more, uh, more significant, more, were more varied coming from a larger pool of students. Uh, and so I, I, I really tried to make them, I tried to, to make them switch on the cameras. But okay, uh, I know that there are, I know, technical, cultural aspects involved, so I didn't want to push too much. But um, so I did some effort uh, with moderate success, only moderate success, okay? Um, but still I had, um, uh, and we, we are typically used to have um, contributions through voice, okay? Uh, here we started also having through the chat window, which is, uh, it's interesting, it's challenging because we are focused on, on, on teaching and then we have to keep an eye on the chat window. So, um, so that's, that's a challenge. So sometimes we miss, we may miss something, um, but it has, I think, two, two advantages. Uh, first, there are those students who don't like to speak, okay? And for those, right, contributing through the chat is a good option. And I think that some students participated because there was a chat window. Uh, it also allows some of them to think a little bit more about their contribution. Uh, and then, so they write a slightly more structured contribution that they might have done it if it was through voice. Uh, so, um, and then, okay, uh, the, uh, the breakout rooms, breakout rooms, that's another function that is always very, very, very popular, I think. Uh, so I think that the engagement was quite reasonable. Uh, not, 100%, uh, not, not covering all students, but I think it was okay. Uh, I think it was okay. Uh, potentially, perhaps in the future, with a more, uh, with some greater institutional involvement. So from the institution saying, well, it's important that you have a cameras on, etc. But then you have people who don't have a good internet connection, so you can't really ask that mm -hmm. from, uh, from them. Uh, so. Yeah, but it's, I think that we, uh, it's not because we want students to have their cameras on. It's not because of that. Uh, okay, it's also nicer if they have the cameras on because otherwise we just see uh, black rectangles, which is not nice. But the thing is, I mean, it's, it's better for them because they, they get more active. So uh, mm. you, can't, you can't be lying on your bed uh, when you're, I mean, when you're, you're being recorded. So to get more active, I think. You mentioned how, how important it is to, to stand up uh, while you teach and uh, your, your makeshift studio that you, that you created for yourself uh, became a little bit famous, I, I would like to say, uh, on the internet. I've seen it on LinkedIn, but also the Harvard Business School publishing uh, faculty launch. They have featured you and your studio uh, in one of their articles. Uh, can you tell us a little yeah. bit about your studio and reflect how you how you created it? <laughs> yeah, so that's um, that was that happened in my very first class for HSC. So, um, so I had everything prepared to broadcast the the classes from home. So I prepared everything. So I I upgraded my internet service. Um, so getting the right equipment. And because I was standing, or I wanted to, to stand, I elevated uh, the, the, the material, the laptop, then uh, an iPad at the back so that I could see the, the slides and, the, the, and, and keep, keep watching the, the students at the same time. So, okay, so I had everything prepared. The night before, the internet became unstable. Uh, and, uh, okay, I tried to solve uh, through various ways, nothing worked, okay. And the class was at 8.30 a.m. the following day. So I woke up early, nothing happened, so I went to FEP. Um, so basically my challenge was to reproduce the same studio that I had at home uh, with what, whatever I had uh, in, my, in my office. So I picked up several boxes, put them on the table and some folders. Um, 
to try to elevate uh, the laptop, the iPad, etc., etc. So basically, um, it got finished 10 minutes before the class. Um, at that time, I should say, um, was, was providing a dedicated staff member to assist us in, in these early uh, classes. So, and I think that we both shared a little bit the stress because she was uh, in Paris monitoring how things were evolving and I will. So uh, I think I only had half the stress because I shared half of the stress with her. Uh, but it, it, was, it was a bit of, of a challenge. And at the end, I mean, it, it got done. Uh, so um, show must, the show must go on. And uh, now looking back, it was even fun. Uh, at that time, a little bit stressful, but uh, yeah, it's, and, and then, and then um, uh, Harvard Business School is um, uh, also invited people to share their stories about this adventure of online teaching. And, um, and so I, I shared this story, another one, uh, and uh, they thought it was interesting. And so they included that in that, in that newsletter. So mm -hmm. it was, that's also part of the fun. <laughs> and Joe, based upon your experiences, what would be some of the, the aspects that you would uh, improve or change? What is the aspect that you would keep or which ones would you drop in order to, uh, to move forward? So in a future semester, what is it that you would do differently? What is it that you would keep with regards to these new online technologies? I think that's one of the, one of the things that uh, I, I, I developed uh, during these um, this period of synchronous classes is that um, the adaptation of the material has to be um, at least moderate. Um, I mean, some things are relatively tiny, uh, tiny details, but um, uh, for example, I've given you that example of using symbols to enhance communication. Um, small things like, um, um, uh, even the size of the, the fonts, because uh, we, we don't know what is the screen size of our students. So for example, in, in some occasions when there were slides with numbers, with lots of numbers, I, 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 I provided the material in advance with a notice that, look, this has some material which may be difficult to, to see in a small screen, so try, try to prepare for that, even perhaps using a second screen if you can. So, uh, so these are the tiny details, okay? So these are the, the minor, minor. Now, the bigger challenges are to, I think, bring that dish, different types of interactions into the way we organize each class. Um, so, we know that the attention span of students, of everyone, I would say, uh, in, in virtual uh, meetings is more limited. So we, uh, we have only, I think, only done a little bit, or at least I have only done a little bit in terms of fragmenting the material more. Uh, I've tried to do it, but I mean, I think I can do more. So I, I think that that, in, in, in a future, in, in a future uh, interaction with that material, with that kind of teaching, I would probably go further in, in, break, in creating those moments. I mean, those moments when we break the, the, the class space, uh, pace, maybe, I mean, it can even be a, a pool that we can do using Zoom or something. Or it, it, it can be, um, it's, it's a one minute break but it, it requires the student to go there and, and do something. So uh, it, it attracts attention and, and, and very often it creates the clue for the next discussion. That's also one of the things that they appreciate because when we ask a, a question to the class, say 50 people in front of you, okay? Um, and some classes are, are big, 50 people. You, you, you are satisfied with the feedback from one to three people, four people at the most. Otherwise, you spent an entire class time uh, just discussing on that on, on that on that question. Uh, if you if you do a pool, you could quickly get the feeling of the entire class. 
And okay, sometimes the results are expected and then you know where to develop, how to develop the, the discussion, but sometimes the results are unexpected. And then you, it becomes more fun because then you don't have, I mean, you may have predicted that in advance, but sometimes you may not have fully predicted the outcomes. And then you, and then it happens as in a regular discussion. You start saying, okay, how can I, how can I develop this more? Um, and, and so it's, um, so it's these mechanisms that we use that are useful, not only because of what they allow us to stop doing, which is to stop talking, but it also allows us to get feedback and then direct the course based on the outcomes of the group. And, and uh, so I think that I would definitely give it more thoughts on how I could do it more often on a more systematized basis. Um, uh, for example, Harvard Business School has been very good at providing those very early seminars on teaching online that I think were seen by half of the academic world. Um, I mean, they had 7,000 people watching the, their first uh, seminar. And, uh, and they did provide many time-tested hints on uh, how to do online teaching. Now, I think we were only able to absorb the most immediate hints. Okay, we had one, one week, two weeks to prepare, so we just went for the easiest part, which made a big difference, by the way. Um, now we have the opportunity to, um, to bring more of that uh, into, into structural aspects of our, of our classes. So thank you so much uh, for sharing your insights with us, your experiences, uh, and also your challenges and how you dealt with that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, and 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 congratulations for for you uh, for organizing this, which is another another uh, area of response of the academic community to these uh, to to the challenges brought by this this, uh, this new time. And by the way, this is something that would probably not have happened if we didn't have this shift to online teaching. So there are spillovers. I mean, we basically had to solve a problem on, on how to teach, okay? And then you have two of us organizing virtual uh, uh, interviews and broadcasting through LinkedIn that you would never be doing probably if this, ha this haven't, haven't happened. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, so there are interesting spillovers uh, happening. It's good to hear that this being yeah. appreciated, Joe, and thank you so much for contributing.